So as you guys are aware, in chapter 931 of One Piece, Big Mom washes ashore in Wano, and to the surprise of many, she no longer has any memories or even the knowledge of who she is. I want you guys to know that this is a big deal. On a scale of one to important guys, this is game changing. I think that for a lot of people, their impression and their perception of Big Mom is about to drastically change. But I think that most everybody is asking about now, what happens next? Where does the story go from here? So I think that it's about time that we really talk about Big Mom's amnesia and the significance it could have. Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, before we really get into this video, I want to let you guys know that this is really the second part of a series of discussions that I'm making about Big Mom. I'll include the link to the first part in the description. That's really my jumping off point of to a lot of the things that eventually I want to talk about, but not really talking about Big Mom's amnesia specifically all that much. I guess I just believe that watching that video makes all the other videos that I plan to make about Big Mom make a lot more sense without needing to in-depth explain the same thing over and over again so that we can get to new discussion. But yeah, for the most part, if you ever get confused about anything or don't fully understand why I might say something, just assume that most likely it's because that that information was explained in more depth in that video. But yeah, we don't have any good segues here. Big Mom's amnesia, what does this mean? And I don't really see a lot of people discussing this, uh, but it is definitely the case Oda really has two avenues in which he could take Big Mom from here, depending on what it is that she remembers or how it is that she is. In layman's terms, these two options are Big Mom is friend or Big Mom is enemy. I mean, just theoretically, guys, Big Mom doesn't need her memories of what the Strats have done to them to potentially attack them if she just doesn't like them. But you don't really see people bringing this up or speculating this or talking about this because it's been highly suggested that this probably will not be the case. Unless you've done something specifically to piss her off, most likely she is going to be agreeable. And as you guys would know, I would take this a step further and suggest that Big Mom's inherent nature is incredibly pure. Now, amnesia can be a difficult subject to tackle because there's all uh, different kinds of variations of how this could affect people. There are very many nuanced cases. And so with Big Mom essentially not knowing who she is, that's a very severe case of amnesia. And I don't even wanna tackle this scientifically because I really doubt that Oda is going to take this uh, fully realistically. But I have read up on it a little bit. I just wanna throw this out there, guys. There's people who've had this kind of amnesia who they don't remember who they are um, and have essentially constructed an entirely new identity and reality for themselves. Like people wake up in a dumpster after some sort of traumatic head injury, and now they think that they were Bill, even though that they were born Margaret. And they recall their rich history in England and in France, when in fact they have never left the United States. No joke. And get this guys, there's even a case of a missing person who is not actually missing, they just don't know who he was originally. But I digress, as interesting as this might be, I don't know how much of this we can really uh, compare to One Piece. But one thing that I found to be pretty consistent through all the different cases of amnesia that I've read of, uh, amnesia can change somebody's personality. Your accumulated memories and life experiences in many ways uh, can define your actions and your behaviors. However, in these same cases, there are examples of inherent natures of people that despite missing really all of the experience which you would assume would have created this, um, they haven't changed. But back to One Piece, even though there's a lot of directions this could potentially go, my general assumption is that the Big Mom that we are about to meet is going to be more like the Big Mom of the past, Big Mom as a child. Going back to these cases of how people with amnesia have changed, but also in many ways have remained the same, I think that there are certain elements of Big Mom that she was simply born with. The loyalty Big Mom showed to her parents as they dropped her off on the shores of El Baf, I think that that's just Big Mom. It's the very same loyalty that she has made to Carmel, despite her simply leaving one day as far as Big Mom is concerned, Big Mom is still waiting for her to return. That's loyalty. Big Mom's inclination to want to help others, as exampled by wanting to tear the fins off the fishmen and the, the joints off the long arms, she didn't do this for any malicious reason, she just wanted them uh, to be more normal. Now, of course, her reasoning behind this was bad, but the nature behind this is good. Big Mom wants to be helpful. 
And I think that the same thing applies to the, the bear and the wolf that she saw fighting in the woods. She wanted to help them get along, so she put them in the same cage. So related to this, I think that Big Mom's inherent nature is she doesn't like people fighting. She wants people to get along. Honestly, guys, I cannot find a single thing about childhood Big Mom that would be in any way negative. So any inherent nature that I come up for Big Mom will always be positive. Now, of course, you'll say, well, you know, her parents abandoned her. She caused all sorts of destruction in her hometown. I don't think that any of this was malicious in nature. This was simply Big Mom being stupid and overpowered, trying to help in ways that she didn't know what she was doing, ultimately leading to destruction. And yes, I do think that Chopper and company might have to deal with this side of Big Mom as well. But I don't think that this in any way negatively reflects her character. You would just never see me argue that Linny from Of Mice of Men was a bad person. I mean, for a child, what are some of the negative things? She could be a liar, she could be hateful, vengeful, or cruel. I don't think Big Mom is any of these things. But actually, I'm going to take a small step back from what I just said. I would watch out for Big Mom potentially being a little bit greedy. Maybe in a way that's similar to Luffy. Luffy would never share his meat. I don't know if Big Mom would necessarily want to share anything, but we would need more examples to really uh, make this a big deal. So again, guys, these are just some of the things that I do expect to carry over, even though Big Mom no longer remembers uh, who she is. But she will also lose certain aspects of her personality, especially the parts of her personality that we got to see in Whole Cake Island uh, and Fishman Island. We talked about this in the last video, but Big Mom has had a traumatic life, and um, even if she might have initially been one way, life itself has forced her to change. We talked about her increasing frustration at not being able to prevent people uh, from fighting. The only solution that she can come up with is to actively stop them and in some cases kill them. Or her possible issues with abandonment, having been abandoned essentially at every turn in her life, leading to the present day Big Mom having things such as the roulette, not letting people leave Whole Cake Island, not letting her own daughters pursue their interests. I think that these are all derivatives of Big Mom's past, a past that she will likely forget. And so guys, in my opinion, I believe and I expect to see that Big Mom will lose these aspects of her personality. So basically, in my mind, she will retain everything that is good about Big Mom and lose the vast majority of the things that are bad, making her very, very likely uh, to become a friend in the next couple chapters. Really, in my mind, the only thing that could make Big Mom initially still an antagonist, even without her memories, is if Chopper or company tried to attack her. Um, but I don't see that happening because the first words out of Big Mom's mouth is, who am I? And the person that Oda chose to have meet her, greet her on the shore was Chopper, who is a doctor. And when Big Mom says this, Chopper's doctoring instincts are gonna go out of control. There's no way that he's going to allow anybody to attack her because it'll be very, very clear that she is sick or if not sick at the very least injured. And guys, if you wanna sit down with me and talk about moral dilemmas, let's talk about Chopper, right? Because as a doctor, his, his, he should want to cure her, but to cure Big Mom of her condition would mean to restore her memories, which would then make her an antagonist that the strats can't deal with in the moment. And if you can easily make her an ally now and you get to know her and she's friendly, you get along, why would you want to lose that? There's some serious layers here. I think that there's very little doubt that Oda intended this, that he intended for Chopper uh, to have to rationalize this and in the end come to the conclusion, as we should suspect of what will eventually be the world's greatest doctor, that he will have to cure her regardless of what, uh, what comes from it. But I say here that he will have to cure her, but the biggest wrench in this plan, at least in my understanding of it, is how do you cure somebody of amnesia? As far as I am aware, there is very little that Chopper could actually do. So I think that more than anything, what this would set up is Chopper beginning to care for Big Mom, getting to know her and for Big Mom to do the same of them. But in the end, Chopper won't likely be able to help her. She will just naturally regain her memories over time. And for people who suffer from amnesia, this is not something that is uncommon. But again, guys, it is important that Chopper is a doctor. Big Mom would then become a patient, somebody that Chopper might feel responsible for in many ways. So I think that it's likely that from this point going up until Big Mom regains her memories, she's going to continue to travel with Chopper and, you know, whoever else is with him. She's going to befriend them. Unless for whatever reason, Big Mom gets snatched, if that's even possible, by some other faction, whether that be Kaido or her own pirate crew. 
But anyway guys, this has so many layers. I know that my instant knee-jerk reaction was that I didn't like the amnesia as a pure uh, plot device. I think that in many ways it just struck me as wrong. But as you think about it more, from where we could go from here, I don't know if it could be any more interesting. So maybe that makes it good. If you guys take yourselves back to Whole Cake Island and Big Mom's own flashback when she was five years old, uh, there was a whole lot of discussion about essentially all of Big Mom's parental figures. Whether it be her original parents or Mother Carmel, a lot of people criticized them for enabling her. And even afterwards with Stroyson. These characters find it very difficult to tell Big Mom no, because they're scared of her. One of the absolute best examples of this goes back to the bear and the wolf from the forest. As we said earlier, Big Mom put them in the same cage, the bear ends up killing the wolf, Big Mom punishes the bear and inadvertently kills it too. After this, Big Mom is clearly distraught. She is seen crying, she knows that she has done something wrong, and as she admits this to Mother Carmel, it's almost as if she's anticipating uh, some kind of punishment herself. She's been very bad. Killing is wrong. But that never comes. Carmel instead praises Big Mom for having such a good heart. And although it's true that she didn't intend on killing the bear, and I do agree with Carmel that Big Mom at this point was a sweetheart, Carmel in a way influenced Big Mom to her later belief that it is okay to kill if your intentions are good. Killing bad people, or in this case the bad bear, is not necessarily the worst thing. I think that you can take it to the bank, that this had a huge impact and influence on Big Mom. This is why people say that Big Mom's parents oftentimes enabled her, and gave her the authority or the rationale to do some horrendous things. Another good example is, um, after Big Mom tried to tear the, the fins off of a fishman, later she tried to tear the joints off of the long arms, and all it really takes is for Mother Carmel to step in and say, Big Mom, under no circumstances are you to ever hurt anybody, ever. But you never even get a hint of that out of Mother Carmel's mouth. Yes, she understands Big Mom didn't intend to do that, but at the same time, you have to teach her and, and punish her when she does wrong. Not just in a case by case, but please don't crush me, Big Mom. Everyone in Big Mom's entire lives have been walking around eggshells when it comes to her because in the off chance that whatever they end up saying upsets her and makes her angry and she strikes out at them it's like well we're likely to die so instead i'm gonna try my very best to make this work and make big mom happy all of the time and so you might be wondering why exactly is this relevant and so i just want to say something and we're going to switch around the wording so it comes off as a little bit different but big mom has essentially forgotten her entire life she doesn't know who she is, but she's going to keep many of the things that inherently made Big Mom who she is. She's going to be personality-wise much like she was as a five-year-old. And we're also, I'm also going to assume that the memories that she forms now, she's going to retain even afterwards, even after she regains her memories. So essentially guys, she might be in a way reliving her childhood. This is an alternate universe where Big Mom's childhood could go potentially a little bit differently. We've already speculated that inherently Big Mom is incredibly loyal, and I think that this sort of relationship and bond could form between herself and Chopper. She could end up, in, in some ways, looking up to Chopper as she did Mother Carmel, assuming that Chopper treats her well because she is his patient. This could potentially give Chopper an opportunity to do something that Big Mom has never been able to experience in her entire life, somebody who could actually properly parent her. If Big Mom ends up traveling with the Straw Hats and she gets into all sorts of trouble, doing all the things that we got to see in the past, she's trying to be helpful, but in the end it ends up being destructive. The problem in the past is that everybody was afraid of her and enabled her. Chopper could be better than that. Chopper could be the father that Big Mom never had. Now of course guys, this is all hypothetical. We don't really know what's going to happen. It's quite possible that Chopper is just as bad as everybody uh, before him. But at the same time, it seems so purposeful for everything to have repeated on Big Mom time and time again with all of her parental figures. And for this cycle to at some point stop so that she is allowed to change and grow. But of course, this will all become complicated at the point in which Big Mom regains all of her memories, but the lasting effects could still be there if she remembers her time with Chopper. This is an absolutely great segue to lead Big Mom into questioning her own morality and ethics. 
which is something that I do not believe has ever been questioned in her entire life. And in many ways, her perception of Chopper, if what ends up happening is what we have speculated, could honestly be reinforced at the point in which she regains her memories. Because what Big Mom stands for is very, very similar to what the Striats stand for when it comes to diversity, respecting all of the races, people not fighting. The Strahats, in many ways, represent exactly what Big Mom, the ideal that Big Mom wants to strive for. And I think that it's likely, as Big Mom travels with the Strahats, that the Strahats and Chop are going to encounter villages that have been wronged by Kaido, and they are going to help them. So I think that the memoryless Big Mom is going to become fond of the Strahats and of Chopper. At some point, she's going to regain her memories. Obviously, she learned a lot from Mother Carmel. She based her entire world off of her, and then she's going to begin to compare the two. And I think that it is likely going to confuse her. These Straw Hats are her enemies. They have wronged her. They, they stand opposed to her and everything that she stands for and her dreams and her paradise. And having gotten to know them, she's going to begin to realize that in actuality, they are not enemies. At the very least, I hope that she is smart enough to realize that. Because on one hand, if you're Big Mom and you've been traveling with the Strats, you've gotten to know them, you've maybe become fond of them and then you get your memories back and you realize that they might have an agenda in this right they want big mom to be their friend uh because obviously they don't want to fight kaido and big mom at the same time so maybe the initial reaction from big mom is is that a betrayal how could you deceive me but you still remember that chopper tried his very best to try and facilitate regaining her memories and if you're big mom you begin to think like why would you do that why would you want my memories back i'm i'm your enemy and at the same time, they've done so many positive things. It's like, why would they have done these things? Did they know these things about me? Did they stage all of this? Or is this just really who they are? But there's another side of this coin, which we have not even talked about yet. And that is Big Mom's hunger attacks. Guys, this really depends on how long Big Mom actually travels with the strats and exactly how long it takes her to regain her memories. But it's likely that she will not have any sorts of, of sweets or good food available to her for longer than she has been accustomed to in her, you know, 70 years of existence. And so the question has been for the longest time, what exactly causes her rages? And I've speculated in the past, and I'll include a link in the description to that video, that Big Mom is uh, chronically addicted to sweets. That is her condition. There is some debate on when her actual first episode was. A lot of people think that it was before she went to Elbaf, and that's why her parents abandoned her, but I don't personally agree with that, although we do not know the answer for sure. I think that Big Mom was just uh, trying to be helpful and ended up being destructive in wherever she came from. That's why her parents abandoned her. But it wasn't until she tasted Simla that that triggered her uh, addictive symptoms. And her very first rage in Elbaf, it was too good almost like drugs to her. And so this is the timeline, guys. Big Mom had Simla, and that was the first time ever that we got to see her with swirly eyes, which are associated with her condition. That She then had to uh, essentially starve herself for several days uh, before she was allowed to eat again. And in her final moments, before uh, the rage and Elbaf, we can see her thinking about Simla and just how delicious it was. And then we can presume that she blacked out. And I think that we see the same thing repeated twice in Whole Cake Island. She was probably thinking about Croquim Bush uh, before she blacked out and raged at the beginning of the arc. And then later in the arc, we know for sure in the moments before she uh, raged and started tracing the strides everywhere, she was thinking about the cake. So in my estimation, these sweets are the cause of her rages. And that would make her almost exactly the same as the children of Punk Hazard. They exhibit the very same signs and symptoms, even as far as the memory loss itself, because they were chronically addicted. It was stated that they were chronically addicted to Caesar's candy. So essentially how addiction works is that it gets progressively worse over time the more that you quote use. And Big Mom's addiction has had 65 years to grow out of control. And so one of the questions, again, that we should be asking is how this might relate to Big Mom without her memories. And so again, I don't have an answer for you guys, a definitive answer, but usually addictions it is more of like a physical thing. It's a physical dependence. I think that you would still feel the effects of it even if you don't remember your past. 
And so that leads us into Wano, which is described as a wasteland. Most of the food is poison, very little of it is available, and even that which is potentially available for them to, to have or to steal is not sweet. Not the thing that Big Mom is addicted to. So I'm just going to tell you guys there is a real possibility that Big Mom again rages in Wano. Potentially even before she regains her memories. Or maybe that is the catalyst which helps her regain her memories. I just do not think that it will be the Stride's first thought or first concern, and Big Mom may not even know the source of it herself, that she absolutely needs sweets or she's going to go in a withdrawal and rage. Which makes that situation even more likely to occur. And guys, again, this could have a profound effect on the direction of the story. I mean, we've already talked about how Big Mom's condition is almost exactly the same as the children of Punk Hazard. And who has experience dealing with the symptoms of the children of Punk Hazard? Yes, our man, the Dr. Chopper. He, more than anybody else in the One Piece world, is capable of recognizing Big Mom's condition. And thus, as of right now, would be the only person who could possibly cure her. And no, we talked about how Big Mom's amnesia, maybe Chopper can't do anything about that, or at least I don't know how he would do that. But when it comes to her addiction, Chopper actually knows what it is that he would need to do to help her. Because in a way, Chopper helped cure the children of Punk Hazard. He didn't do it himself, but he knows a guy. Law was the one to do it. And Law's in Wano. Guys, I think that it's been fairly telegraphed that um, although Big Mom rages, she herself is not aware of that fact. She doesn't know why the Giants don't like her anymore because she doesn't remember her rages and nobody told her. She doesn't remember why Mother Carmel and the orphans disappeared again. She doesn't remember her rages and Stroizen wasn't touching that with a 10 foot pole. Specifically lied to her telling her that Mother Carmel left but would come back. Big Mom rages in Whole Cake Island. Jimbei was the one to save her, and afterwards, seeing all the calamity, she asked Jimbei what had occurred here, and Jimbei lied to her, saying that he didn't know. Big Mom doesn't know that she killed her own children because she doesn't remember what happened. Her children don't tell her, and it also helps that her other children collect the lifespan taken from these children so that they come back to life. So I have been waiting since Whole Cake Island for a reasonable excuse for Oda to give Big Mom the knowledge of her own rages. Because at some point, in my opinion, she has to find out. It is way too integral to her plot, especially when it comes to the disappearance of Mother Carmel. And here you would have it. The first person who would truly understand her condition and be in a situation where it is prudent to tell her in order to cure her, it's Chopper. Chopper is way too honest a doctor to ignore this fact to the detriment of Big Mom, regardless of whether or not she might be an enemy. And it's possible, sure, that Big Mom doesn't believe him or believe anybody, but I think that Big Mom would be curious enough to ask people that she thinks that she can trust, like her own family. Now this can go a number of ways, but I think with that one major takeaway from Whole Cake Island is the bonds established between certain members of the Big Mom Pirates and the Straw Hats themselves. So you talk about uh, Pudding, you talk about Gatakuri, characters that I think are likely to be in Wano and have obtained a certain level of trust and respect in the strats even if the strats were in their you know general proximity and chopper had become aware of her condition and his doctoring instincts urged him to tell anybody and everybody that they need to help her there are people within the big mom pirates that might listen and have the opportunity to tell big mom the truth and a reason to do so because the rages are not just bad for big mom's enemy or big mom's herself they're bad for her entire family and they, just the same as the Straw Hats and Chopper, would want her cured. This, guys, is the can of worms that I have been waiting for Oda to open. Because the moment that, that the Big Mom Pirates and Big Mom herself begin asking uh, questions, things could evolve very, very quickly. Like, seriously, I do not think that it is that big of a step for Big Mom to finally accept the possibility that she has rages and that through Katakuri, or through Pudding, or through Montendor, she realizes that she does a lot of things that she would never do while in this condition and then begin to reminisce on the disappearance of Mother Carmel. What exactly happened to her? How could a person literally be there one second and have left the island the next? And then the thought may begin to form. I, Big Mom, killed 
Mother Carmel. And then you begin to think about the person who told you that Mother Carmel would return, Stroizen, who is likely in Wano. And then you ask him straight up, what happened? Guys, this could escalate to the point of 100% intensity in the span of just a couple chapters. But yeah, guys, I just want to make this clear. Up till now, I've been speculating this without uh, sort of delving into all the various possibilities, especially when it comes to these circumstances surrounding how all of this may occur. There are many, many ways in which Oda could do this. Like, for instance, if Big Mom doesn't sort of uh, regain her memories until later and uh, begins to rage while, you know, she still doesn't remember her past, she won't immediately connect it to Mother Carmel. And at this point, I would assume that she would have no recollection of her family, so I just don't think that anything would get out of control until her memories return, which could be during, before, or after a potential rage. And the same sort of applies to what exactly the Straw Hats will be doing and their relationship with Big Mom at the moment that all of this occurs, guys. So first off, how does Big Mom get her memories back? And so I think the common thought at this point in time is you have Pudding, who has the memory devil fruit. Could it, I mean, it couldn't be any more perfect setup to potentially help Big Mom remember the past. So if Chopper is the doctor that I think that he is and will choose Big Mom, his patient, above himself and the crew for the sake of, of being a doctor, then, you know, how do you create this situation of a potential team up between Chopper and Pudding? Also, consider this, the Big Mom Pirates will obviously be looking for Big Mom. Do they find out that she doesn't have her memories first, or do they only meet Big Mom after she has regained them? Could we see a Big Mom Pirates and Straw Hat team up in order to fix and heal Big Mom? To at the very least, at first, regain her memories. This could also potentially change the perception of the strats to a larger number of Big Mom pirates continuing a trend that we that was started even before Whole Cake Island when the strats first befriended Lola. The Big Mom pirates are becoming friends left and right. This would be another way to achieve that. I mean, imagine yourself as a Big Mom pirate, child of Big Mom, and you see, you know, this enemy pirate crew that that you know that Big Mom would absolutely kill if she remembered the past, but still they choose to try and, and help her above their own interests. That's stuff that facilitates respect. And I can already imagine the vocal minority of the community going up in arms with trash, garbage writing, why would the Strides and why would Chopper ever do that? That is ridiculously stupid, yet they forget one of the major themes of One Piece, which the power that Luffy has, nobody else has. He turns all of his enemies, or most of them at the very least, into his friends, into his allies for doing things just like this. Time and time again, the Strides act against their own self-interest, put themselves in situations that they really should have considered against, but in the end, it serves them because of the bonds formed in the process and the allies made. But anyway, guys, I do think that we should be thinking about the relationship between the Strats and the Big Mom Pirates and how the timing of all of this goes down, when they all meet, what ends up happening, how this will affect that. And keep this in mind as well. If Big Mom ends up traveling with the Strats and with Chopper and does not get captured by Kaido or the Strats uh, attempt to protect her from that in, uh, happening, then essentially the Strats will have protected Big Mom when they could have thrown her to the wolves. The easy out for the Strats in this situation, if they were going to be somebody other than themselves, would to make it apparent where Big Mom is to the Kaido pirates so that they would fight and so that, that the Strats wouldn't have to deal with both of them. One would kill or capture the other. But I very much doubt that that is the direction that the Strats are going to choose. And I think that the perceptive Big Mom pirates uh, would likely realize this. In this way, the Strats would have saved her. And you know, again, consider the layers that this creates in the story. We've already said that the person who was responsible for curing the children of Punk Hazard was not Chopper. Chopper, of course, recognized their disease, but he couldn't really do anything about it. The person who cured them was Law. We've already compared the children of Punk Hazard to Big Mom, so maybe it's, it's going to be, eventually in the story, Law needs to be the one to fix Big Mom, to really save her from her own rages. But Oda has made this abundantly clear in the most recent chapters. Law is not a straw hat, nor does he share their, their sentimentality. 
If, for instance, Big Mom were to be raging and Chopper looks to Law to potentially try to help her and the Big Mom pirates from stopping Big Mom from literally killing everybody, we need to perform some kind of surgery on her, I don't know if Law would agree. He would look to do the thing that would make his survival the most likely, not considering the possibility that helping her would make the Big Mom pirates his allies. Or if he does perform the surgery, if that is even possible to begin with, this could be construed as a huge character growth for him. An acceptance that the way that the strats do things is the way to likely succeed. But again, talking more about Big Mom's rages, let's assume that this ends up happening in Wano. In Whole Cake Island, it was relatively easy in order to uh, procure the sweets that she desired. Whole Cake Island is all about foods. They had the ingredients beforehand, despite the fact that Big Mom is really, really picky. Is the same true of Wano? I don't think so. I don't think that Wano has the ingredients that Big Mom would would need. And I don't think that Sanji might will have the same amount of time in order to potentially bake her, you know, like a cake or whatever it is that she wants. It's quite possible that if Big Mom rages in Wano, the normal means that the Big Mom Pirates use in order to snap her out of it is not an option. So you literally need Law to perform the surgery to save her. Otherwise, she's going to go on an endless rampage. But how exactly is Law going to perform a surgery when Big Mom is already raging? You know, a lot of people are looking for an opening for maybe the Strats to actually fight and maybe even defeat Big Mom. And I don't know if straight up defeating her is possible, but it might be necessary. We talked about this a lot at Whole Cake Island. This was one of my favorite theories at the time that ultimately got debunked because poor Bobbin got killed. And I really do hope that Bobbin, just the same as Moscato, ends up coming alive because his powers would be really, really useful in a situation like this. You may need some sort of hack's way to take down Big Mom, like, like Bobbin's uh, hypnosis abilities. Something like that to put her to sleep. If you can't just straight up beat her. Or maybe another avenue to pursue is that it's clear that Seastone originated from uh, from Wano, and we know that Big Mom is a devil fruit user. Could you potentially procure enough Seastone uh, to incapacitate Big Mom? I hope so. And guys, I know that it sounds like I'm speaking as if a Big Mom rage in Wano is guaranteed. I don't think that any of this is necessarily guaranteed, but I do think that it is likely based on what we know right now and something that we should definitely consider as possibility and potentially rationalize ways of, of how it's going to play out. But ultimately, this video is based on the reveal of Big Mom's amnesia, which is most significant in the cases of Big Mom's lost memories while she rages. Not only from missing memories in a current rage, but from those of the past as well. I've said this a lot and I'm going to continue to say this in the next upcoming months. How will Big Mom react to the possible knowledge, however it ends up occurring to her, that Mother Carmel died because of Big Mom's rages? Big Mom killed her and done all sorts of other horrific things that she would have never done originally or intentionally. Everything that I have said up until now in this video is from the lens that ultimately Big Mom will become an ally and or a friend and that the Straw Hats will save her and heal her. But on the other side of this possibility is the exact opposite. Big Mom is neither saved nor healed, doesn't become an ally or a friend because all of this new information uh, breaks her. I think that I'm going to go ahead and save this particular conversation for another video. So the part three of my giant Big Mom discussion, because there is a lot to talk about here. But to go back to the best case scenario, after hopefully Big Mom's, all of her issues have been dealt with. She no longer has hunger attacks. Law has cured her. She has her memories back. Um, and in the process, she and her crew have befriended the Strahds. I just think that this is, it's perfect. Because what this sets up is Big Mom remembering everything that she has ever stood for. And it gives her a moment to reflect on all of the mistakes that she has made in her life and vow uh, to just do better. Be the better Big Mom. And what it is that she actually wants from the world. She wants to facilitate peace. She wants people to stop fighting. Everyone to get along. And at the same time, she would have an absolutely great example of what it is that she hates 
more than anything else. Kaido is almost the exact opposite of what Big Mom stands for. His plan is to destroy the world. That's a fight that Big Mom should want. And maybe over the last 65 years, she has forgotten that and needed a reminder. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much all I had to say today. As always, I am curious as to what you guys think, whether you agree, or disagree, and why. Just share your thoughts. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.